Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of this Tinkercad Masterclass series. In this episode, we'll be going over how to rotate objects, how to change object settings, and how to use handles. I'll get into more about the handles later. So let's say you have this house, but you want to rotate it. Now, the mirror tool works for basically if you're trying to rotate it 180 degrees, but if you want to rotate it 45 degrees, you're going to have to use this little rotate tool. When you select your object, you'll also get all of these different buttons to kind of scale it around. Now, we don't need that. What we're interested in are these little arrows that appear. So we're going to just use this one on the bed. If you click it, hold it, and then just drag it around. If you keep your mouse towards the inside of the rotational center, then you'll rotate by 22.5 degrees. But if you pull it out, you'll rotate by one degree increments. And then if you want a more exact um, rotation, let's say I want 55. Getting that exact might be a little hard, or at least a little annoying. But what you can do is when you unclick it, this little box still exists. Click that. And then I can set it to 50. Or... 55. So, you might have seen, whenever you click on an object, this little panel will come out. It's got, like, your shape properties. And you might have wondered what all these sliders do. We'll go to the first sliders, which are the length, width, and height sliders. These might be pretty self-explanatory. Just pull on them to change the length, width, and height. I'll just set these all back to 20 by then just clicking on it and then typing in 20. But radius and steps might not make as much sense. So it's on 10 steps, which is pretty good for most objects. But this radius controls how much of like a bevel it has. Now the reason this is important and that why these sliders matter is when you move or change the size of an object using these things on the side, you're more accurately kind of scaling it. But then this is like still staying at like a one by one kind of scale, but you're still changing the size. So if you have the intent to bevel it, you just want to keep this like thing solid and just use those dimensions to change it instead of using the little handles. Now these are the most accurate as you can see like you change it and it'll actually tell you what it is. But you can change these doesn't change. And then obviously if you pull up the steps you'll get more steps so you can either make it a very like faceted look or super smooth. So that's the different properties for a square. Now, cylinders have similar stuff. Except you can change the number of sides to make it like 64 sides. And they have the same idea of a bevel and then you can choose the number of segments for it. And then again, scaling it does change like its dimensions. The sphere as just the steps. Which you can get some really cool looking stuff. Roofs have nothing. There's not much to change on it. Cones. They have a top radius and a base radius. Now this is good if you're trying to like not make a perfect cone but you kind of want to cut it a little bit. You can change the height on it and then you can change the number of sides. Roofs, nothing text. You can change the text, the bevel, and the number of segments. Now it does look kind of weird if you just don't bevel it because you can get like thick text. But by adding in the segments that's when you really get the bevel. Wedges don't have anything. Pyramids, you can change the number of sides. You can get some really cool shapes out of this. I mean at some point you just get a cone. So, you know, it's 
it's a little bit redundant, but you know, still works. Yeah, the half sphere can change anything on that. The polygon is cool because you can change the number of sides. It's basically like a lower poly cylinder. Works out pretty well. Then you have bevel and segments. So there's a lot of overlaps because these were before the sliders existed. Then the parabola, I find you can get some really cool stuff, like having it on three steps. Cause it's like this triangle weird thing. So you can get some really cool stuff by messing around with the different sliders. Now for the torus, which is basically donut, you can change the radius, number of sides, the steps. So the steps are basically the number of like rings on the outside to make like really um, kind of like more triangle or more circle. And then the sides control the sides more like around it. And then the radius controls the radius. For the tubes, you have the radius of it, the wall thickness, the sides. So you can change the number of sides. A lot of these have the side option, and then a lot of them also have the bevel option. Then on this star, you can change the radius, the number of points you can make like Three points is the least. Three points look a little funny. I'm trying to get to four, so that's what four looks like. And then you can change the percent of inner radius, which basically just changes the distance from that point to that point on the whole thing. Stars, nothing. Icosahedron, there's nothing. The rings, this is where we first see handles. So the slider, obviously, is the number of sides. But then this handle lets us control like the exact like shape that it's being revolved in. I'm gonna try to turn on snaps. It gets a little hard trying to get snapping, but if you're familiar with handles, you might have kind of figured out how this works already. But then you can basically like, change these snaps and stuff to make odd shapes that are kind of very organic. Some of the shape generators also use this. But so then with this, you can get this really kind of cool shapes. And then you can just also change the sides. Dice, you get absolutely nothing. Diamonds, you get nothing. Now, the scribble. This is one of the coolest things that they've added recently. It's basically... When you go in and bring it in, you have this little mode where you can draw stuff. And then it turns it into a full 3D object. Then you can erase stuff. Which puts in a really cool thing of getting like more abstract art kind of thing. And then there's the... You can draw whole shapes. And then it makes them full 3D objects. And you can also erase shapes if you're just trying to get rid of a whole area. This is this goes hand in hand with Tinkercad on iPads. Cause then a lot of people tend to draw more naturally with their like their hands on like a touch screen instead of like with the mouse. That's why digital art is a little kind of take some time getting used to than just normally using your pen. This is just a really cool feature to get more organic shapes inside of Tinkercad. And you can definitely make a lot of art with it. Now, the erasing part of this is a little interesting, like getting the shapes. It makes sense for the most part until like, you start going over stuff repeatedly. Then that's when it gets like a little interesting. And then you just hit done when you're done. And then you can change the height. 
So that's the basic shapes. There are a lot more shapes, like you have the text, which then you can pull in individual letters, characters to then basically assemble people together. Now this hangout space thing which is new, so then you can kind of do your own like, architecture scene, I guess. Connectors. Shape generators, which are really helpful. We'll get into that in another video. And then you have circuit assemblers, which are like basically these little parts that you can then print and assemble circuits. You have components like Arduinos, so you can kind of do some mock-ups in Tinkercad. Then the printer, the printable kits. I haven't actually tried, but these look pretty fun if I wanted to print out all these pieces. Then they also have the skeleton part, which is nice because then you can kind of add skulls. And a lot of this looks to have been done in Tinkercad. And then you can have your favorite parts collections. I'll get into that in another episode. Thank you all for watching. So just a couple of things before you all go. So these first three videos were more of like a getting y'all up to speed in Tinkercad. The next couple of videos are going to be more of a tips and tricks so you can make your designs much better. Remember, if you like this video, please like and share it. If you didn't like it, dislike it. Tell me why in the comments. If you can, please support me on Patreon. You'll get these videos early. And if you like more videos, just subscribe. And as always, keep on printing.